Bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I'm in the Maktaba and I'm with uh, a good friend of mine from a long time ago, inshallah, uh, Brother Ibrahim Abu Tamim. And inshallah, we're going to speak about uh, his journey seeking knowledge. Uh, and yeah, you know, I'll just get straight in there. Assalamu alaikum and jazakallah for the invitation. Um, definitely a pleasure. And yeah, long time friend. Or well, a friend is not even befitting, this is our teacher, <laughs> our Ustad Abdul Wahid. No. So, Barakallahu Fikum. Okay, so the first question is uh, you've travelled to quite a few countries to seek knowledge, uh, but you're not a graduate of an Islamic university of Medina or Qasim or Riyadh. No. And I think one of the things that uh, people need to realise that inspires people, that I know I was inspired by, that it's not the case that you have to go to the Islamic University of Medina to become a competent, proficient in the Arabic language, a student of knowledge. Yeah. So let's start from, I guess, Sawas square one. or Square One, yeah. So I, I applied to every university, Imam Saud, Qasim, yeah. um, I don't, maybe not Umm al yeah. maybe we didn't know how to then, yeah. uh, Medina. I applied to Medina more than once. Even Sheikh Haytham Salhan wrote a tazkir for me once. I didn't get accepted. Um, and that's when you actually came to me with the option of going Kuwait. Okay. From Sheikh Faisal Jassim, 2013. You mentioned to me there's an opportunity for I would like to go. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I want to do it. You actually brought it to me that time. That was the first time I That was the first time, that I was traveled. The first time you traveled. Yeah. SubhanAllah, I don't I didn't remember. Yeah. yeah. But even before that, the determination was there anyway. Yeah, I wanted to go. That's the point, because yeah. you tried, you applied for all the universities. Yeah, I applied to yeah, every so single one. That determination. But then I said to myself, um, if I can't go, I need to learn the Arabic language so I have access to the same knowledge everyone else has access to. Yeah. And that was when I was like, I even spoke to one of my teachers and said that I'm thinking about going to Kuwait as a three months intensive program. They were like, I don't really advise it. I deal with more long term programs. Yeah. I said, you know what? I'm going anyway because I ain't getting into no university. <laughs> so I'm doing my thing in it. Like, I need to benefit. <laughs> Everyone's gone. Someone is in my class, we're dealing with one, going into Jam. He's like, mashallah, that's it. I'm still here. Like, I'm going to say, I'm going to wait till it happens. So, yeah. like, alhamdulillah, I just said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to... Um... I was already learning Arabic here. Yeah. So, by that time, I'd finished Medina Books and yeah. Ben Yadik. I'd, I'd been studying Arabic. In the masjid with in the masjid, some of the brothers um, that were teaching. I had a private teacher on Egypt, Skype. Yeah. So, I was doing a lot to try and learn the language. Yeah. So, now, yeah, I, you came and said, I was like, yeah, I'm not even hesitating. <laughs> like, I even had a job teaching assistant at a school. Yeah. And they didn't renew my contract. So I was just like, bruv, tomorrow's my last day. I'm gone. So it worked out. <laughs> it worked out. Alhamdulillah, I just left. So you went Kuwait? I went Tell Kuwait us a for, bit about um, the journey. So there was a three months intensive course that they were doing before for non-Arabic speakers. And Alhamdulillah, because then I'd finished Medina books, I can write and read. Yeah. Speaking is like, yeah. you already know, isn't it? It's not there. It's not there, yeah. So, but they didn't test you on speaking. I remember my brother was like, I, I get motivated when people say you can't do it yeah. because you're in the West. Or like, I remember when I was learning Arabic, someone said, you're not going to learn Arabic because yeah. you're here. Yeah. My thing is, I'm going to show you that you can. You can do it, yeah. So I've always had that drive. Nothing yeah. kind of stops me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So then when I went to there, there has a test, placement test. And we already know there's mustawayat before yeah. we do the test. So the like, different levels. Yeah. Level, like beginners I remember even. one student was like, none of the British students is going to be a mustawayat Yeah. The story oval is two sections, Alif and Ba. Yeah. That's the highest level in the Marcas. So I was like, whatever, innit? I was the only one from the British students in Mustawa Oval Alif. Because of what you put in efforts <laughs> yeah. from before. And the test, Hamdila test, Passed I smashed it. the test. Yeah. Good. Even the Arabic test there, I remember I got 99 out of 100. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I, I was, I wanted, yeah. to, I lo I've always loved Arabic. Yeah. But when someone says as well, you're not going to do it. it I'm not doing it for you. this person. Yeah. But it's like, I need to hear that it's like a kick in the okay, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really important as well. So, obviously, you've done Arabic in the UK. Now you're in Kuwait. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the experience in the classroom, on the program. What did you study? How was so, it? And like, living there, because I think one of the things which is important for every single um, student of knowledge anyway, even if you don't get accepted, for example, to Islamic University, Munich, that nothing stops you from traveling yeah, to a different country. Travel. You and being things. in that, you learn a lot yeah. through the culture. You learn more of, than you learn in a book. In a book, yeah. Through the people, the interactions, it's yeah. life. Yeah. So tell us something about so, how, the program at, in that institute. How was it? 
And what's how, when were you studying? What were the times? What subjects? Teachers? Yeah. Stuff like that. So I remember at first because you're thinking it's an Arabic program, I assumed that most of my studies would be in the Arabic language. Just the language itself, like a book, an Arabic, most of the hours. So I get my timetable now. Arabic's only four hours a week. But I'm studying every day except for Friday from eight to one. Yeah. And then after Asr for two hours of Quran. Yeah. So only two days out of the week, I did a, one session a day of two days of Arabic language. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is the deep end. Like. <laughs> No, no, I've just learned Arabic language. <laughs> now I'm studying Islam in Arabic, like Mashallah. in the deep end. Yeah. Fiqh, yeah. Tawheed. Fiqh, we've done Tafsir. Fiqh al-Mayasir. Then yeah. Tafsir al-Juz Amma from uh, Tafsir al-Sa'adi. We've done Arba'in al Nawawi of Shaykh Uthaymeen. Well, yeah. they had one that they were using, which was a Mukhtasar of Jami' Ulum al-Hakam. Jami' Ulum al-Hakam. They had a Mukhtasar of that. But then the Shaykh, Mashallah, he was using Shaykh Uthaymeen more so. And uh, we done Sirah. I imagine I've never read Sirah in Arabic, let alone the vocab of that is deep. It's a lot, yeah. I kind of gave up that one, to be honest. Like, you know, when you say, do you know what? You, know you, have, to, you have to prioritize where you're focused so you don't fail everything. <laughs> because I'm like, there's words I've never seen before. And yeah. then the way that Sirah is like, a, you have to enjoy it. It's like a yeah, story. Of yeah. So the way the teacher, I'm like, everyone in the class must have studied this before. In Arabic, because he's just reading hey, through the hey, book. Who's in your class? Who have you got in your class? I had students from all across the world, like students from China, yeah. um, different parts of Africa. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's like the Islamic University of Medina. Yeah, it's, it's very it's international. There was people from all over the... Yeah. There was only six students from Britain. Inshallah, good. Six yeah. British students. I had students from Australia, Denmark, everywhere. So before we move on to other places you visited, because I know there's a lot, Inshallah, outside of the classroom... What was it? What was your what was your day like? I we mentioned had, one event can... though that okay, happened because of Arabic here. Yeah? Um, one time, and this is like a southwest problem in southwest London. You know, sometimes we, we learn Adab late. That's why <laughs> we have to travel. <laughs> That's exactly why we have to travel to these countries to learn the Adab of the Muslims. Of course, yeah. So I remember I had to go to the toilet and my next class is starting. So I've gone to the toilet and I've just come in and the teacher asked me a question. I'm like, okay, I didn't really understand the question because of Arabic, I'm just frozen. And this teacher was kind of much or harsh, mutashaddid in aqidah. He would be like, salafi and slap the table like, yeah. like oh. <laughs> so he, I said, anta la turajit fil bayt, like that. I was like, oh my days. You know what saying? You don't do your, you don't, you're not yeah. doing your homework. You don't I'm revise. Like, you you're don't not... know how hard this is for me right now, yeah? yeah? So I used to sit in the front of the class all the time. My table was the first table. As soon as you come in the door, that's my table. I was like this for the two hours. Upset. I was so upset. Yeah. Because I'm like, do you know how hard this is for me? Yeah. I've never studied Islam in Arabic only. Yeah. And you've just come and shut down my life. You yeah. said, I don't revise at home yeah. in front of everyone. Yeah. And then the Sheikh after, I'm like, imagine now the Sheikh wants to talk to me. Yeah. How do I even do that now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how do I really express to the Sheikh? He doesn't how understand I feel? any English at you all. He doesn't understand English. And I can just about put my words together. So imagine you you want to speak, you're getting irated. <laughs> Stuttering, can't breathe. Come like, what's even the word I'm gonna say in it? So I was like, Sheikh, I do almost murder. I just be Arabic. Yeah, yeah, I managed to say that at least. Yeah, yeah. And then he, and then he became a bit more gentle. But it's like that instant was like, yeah. this is deep. You know, it's it's not the same. Yeah. You realize there's a major difference. Like you might have studied, you might have read for a book, yeah. a surah thalatha in yeah. English. Yeah. But something you study in a week in Arabic, it takes you six months to a year. Yeah. Study it in English. Yeah. So the things that you're meant to know like this, because you don't see it as often, you don't bring it to mind. Yeah. So the Sheikh then became a bit more well, layin. But he was He was Yeah, so yeah. you had to, you had to do more work. Yeah. Because you don't want to experience that again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's uh it's those moments that you don't forget that push oh, you never. forever as well. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, so Outside of the classroom. Outside the classroom. In, in with the brothers going out. What was what was it? The so culture. In in my room, we had different rooms. So in our room, I remember there's one brother who's with me, Ismail. Um, we said in our room you can't speak other than Arabic. Yeah. So that was the goal to kind of just have that mentality. Um you experience things that you enjoy that you wouldn't even give attention to in a normal day-to-day -day life. So yeah. we had a tea called Alikaf. You know them sachet coffees? Yeah. There's one called Alikaf. We would cat for this tea. <laughs> oh my, if we can find this, it's like finding gold in the desert, literally. So that you enjoy those things. So yeah. 
what makes you memorize knowledge from those experiences, the experience itself, yeah. is more than the classroom. Yeah. It's the memories outside the classroom. Outside the classroom. Yeah. Meeting a taxi driver who knows that you're not from here, you're a student, he fears Allah, so he wants to be your friend and make things easy for you. Call me, so then you have your private taxi driver. He only speaks Arabic. Yeah. That's your opportunity to practice. Yeah. And it's meeting different people, going to masajid, where you might see, okay, masajid in some of Western places are quite neglected. Yeah. In terms of the zina, like how nice they look and the size and the actual sound system, all these things. Yeah. You go there and it's like, mashallah. It's a masjid. You feel yeah. like, was that the first time you'd seen or been in properly? Yeah. So, I've been to Jordan before that for yeah. only five days though. Yeah. But it was different. It was different. Kuwait was, they set yeah. the bar. Alhamdulillah. So you did your three months? Yeah. Came back? Even... You, because, you know, then you learn about the Bayt al-Mu'addin, Bayt al-Imam. Yeah. You get to, you, the, the Mu'addin host you for dinner stuff. You realise that you start to learn about... Culture but, and, yeah, adab, culture and adab, etiquette. And, and, and love and it's, it's and lived, basically. Yeah. A lived experience as opposed to Literally. just a... Literally. Mashallah, good. So you did three months. At the end of it, you passed your exams. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Got books or whatever. Said... Uh, Many they, books. They gave you books and they... But I think I told you about the gift that they gave us that <laughs> time. Me, I'm not, I'm just, uh... Oh, yeah, God. oh <laughs> no, leave it. A house cannot... phone. <laughs> yeah, so but I'm... those days, maybe it was the thing, in it? No. <laughs> Blu-ray, DVD Blue player. Like, this gave just random whatever stuff. They had in but there. you always got books. So yeah. books was like standard. Yeah. Standard. Like, every time I go to Kuwait, books. my library is, alhamdulillah, may Allah bless yeah. the awqaf of Islam. In I want to speak they... about something that you've been to a couple of book fairs in different countries. Inshallah, we'll yeah. come back to that no, in a minute. Inshallah. Remind me. Okay, so you come back from Kuwait. That's one of the trips you've done. Yeah. Uh, tell us about, was the next one SOAS University doing your degree? Yes. You know, and Islamic studies? Okay, tell us yeah. a bit about that because th I think this is something which is also really important. Sometimes, okay, SOAS is a university in the UK which is known as a Mushtashrik University. Yeah. But that, I think that label is more classical than it is contemporary from one angle. It's still there. It's still there. Though. For those because, who know, if yeah. you have sh yeah, grounding before you go, yeah. you will know. Yeah, so Orientalism as a kind of uh, ideology, as a main, thing, as a main ideology, it's not there. It's not there yeah. no. But as a legacy, it's there. It's there. But they as maintained an ideology, it to an extent. They maintained it, yeah. But so people might think, okay, I'm not going to go to Soas because I'm not going to learn from there. As they say, Kufar, for example, non-Muslims. Uh, I've been Soas, I did my master's there, as you know. And obviously I encourage people that aren't able to go abroad. You to encourage go and me. As Abdul Wahid, mashallah, he has a big influence in my journey. But he may have forgot that Allah, la Allah, yani you jazihu ala dalik. So, yeah, so tell us about uh, Arabic at Soas. So, yes. alhamdulillah, obviously, before I went to Soas, I'd been teaching Arabic. Yeah. I started teaching Arabic as soon as I came back from Kuwait. Yeah. I knew the books that I'd already studied, um, Medina books. Because when I went to Kuwait, I studied Nahu al Wadih. MashaAllah. And then obviously, studying Islam in Arabic, your Arabic will get strong yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, especially if you're that way inclined to study. Nahu al Wadih is a very good book for learning Arabic. Uh, very yeah, good. It's a very good book. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of words because the authors are supposedly farmers. Yeah. Supposedly, they were farmers. That's why you find a lot of the kalimat is zara'a wal hayawanat. It's, it's, a lot, it's, it's yeah. very good for nahu and for speaking because it gives you vocab, vocab. which is for speaking. So, so yeah. then SOAS now, you said I should apply to SOAS because I didn't know what to do next really. Yeah. So I applied, alhamdulillah, I remember I went Umrah 2015 as well, I was just making dua, like, Allah just let me get into this university at least. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I never applied, you know, I just wanted it for Arabic, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, because for me, once I have Arabic, I don't need anything else. Yeah. I can speak to the ulama. I can Listen read their to the books. Doros, yeah. yeah, I'm free now. I'm not the trapped, any musafir for deen, as they yeah. say, the travel in their religion, depending on translators. Yeah. So then, alhamdulillah, the Arabic program was different but similar. Now, the main thing you study in SOAS is modern standard Arabic. Yeah. The only difference is you have classical grammar. Grammar. The rules are preserved. The only difference is vocab. Yeah. So you study classical grammar. The grammar you, is still the grammar. Grammar is classical. Is, yeah, it's classical. The is classical. It's just vocab that's... The vocab is yeah. different. It's to, it prepares you to be able to read any media Arabic. Yeah. understand media Arabic. So social, this, you know, cultural, yeah. political, like that. Yeah, it's everything. vast. Vast, yeah. Because sometimes when we learn Arabic, we think that I, ca I, I can learn Arabic from books that are not religious. Yep. That those words are going to be in religious books. Exactly, yeah. It's to increase your language. Yeah. yeah. That's what allows you to, to read an Arabic to Arabic dictionary. Yeah. Because which you is have important. vocab. Yeah. yeah, which is really important. Sometimes when you say, I'm, I, I can't read anything that's not Islamic, 
Yeah. It's taboo, but it's actually going to benefit yeah, you. Yeah, yes, that's incorrect as well. So that may, and if you want to teach Arabic, you have to be aware of these things. Yeah. So I mean, when I went for my interview, the teacher was like, "Okay, he questioned me in English grammar." I'm like, "Ostad, I'll be straight, yeah. I don't know any of these things. I can tell you in Arabic, though." <laughs> <laughs> Literally, all of the English grammar points, I'm saying, okay, I'll give you an example in Arabic. Yeah. So he's like, okay, your Arabic is good. Maybe even I feel that this is going to be too easy for you. I said, don't worry. I'll just watch how you teach and benefit that way. Yeah, cool. So I, I, I was learning from Aleph to Ba, like joining the letters again. That's the first year. <laughs> That's the first year. And then, well, first, well, to be honest, they learn this in a month. Yeah. They have no prior Arabic and they're yeah. learning to read and write in a month. Yeah. And it shows sometimes... We procrastinate. We yeah. don't put in enough effort. Yeah. They were learning this in a month. Yeah. I watched people that didn't know anything from different countries learn how to read Muslim and write. Muslim and non-Muslim month. as well in the course. The 90% is non-Muslim. Yeah. 90% non-Muslim. Yeah. So they, they pack it in basically. They pack, they it, pack in. it in. And they're expected to do the work yeah. and they're demanded to do the work. Because obviously it's Arabic, yeah. but it's not any Arabic. You're at university. There's a level that you're supposed to study at. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not a game. So sometimes you have to understand if you want to go to study at a high level of education, it's like you know, you study Kitab al you yeah. can study that book in five different levels. Yeah. It's not one level for everyone. Yeah. But you have to be prepared to study. Yeah, you have to put in the work at the that work. level to yeah. get the good results. The hours be dedicated. Like teachers to say, you want relaxed marks? Relaxed work, you get relaxed marks. <laughs> Literally, that was it. <laughs> you relax, yeah. I give you relaxed marks. That's it. So yeah. you there's a mentality. Yeah. So it's intense. You have to memorize the forms and stuff. There's grammar, but then for the first year, it's grammar based. Yeah. But then you always have illustrious sentences, they say, but it's like vocab using all the grammar rules. That was just oh, yeah. the general That's program. year one. Yeah, year one. Okay. Side subjects, because that's the main subject. So, obviously. side subjects, side units you might take, for example, I took on Arabic culture. Arab yeah. culture. Yep. That was a side unit that I did in my first year, Arab culture. I think that was the only one. And introduction to dialects. Yeah. So you get a general study of the linguistics of different dialects. Dialects base being form. Shami and Mesidim, yeah. primarily. Yeah. I.e. Levantine and, and Egyptian. Um, Egyptian, yeah. And then Fusa being a modern standard version. Modern standard Arabic. Okay. So you study, for example, one hour a week or so yeah. in a group session. Just It's like I have a laugh, like, yeah. try and speak. I can't remember anything, <laughs> to be honest, in Egyptian. I used to want to do it, then I said, no, I can't yeah. be asked. Actually, look, this is a book that I... We're doing at the moment a conversational Arabic. Okay, I hate this book. Okay. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I like it. I, I like hate it. it. They made me study in Morocco. Is it? I like it. No, I don't like it. The resources are good. Online, no, you've got all well, the conversations. You know I don't like it. You've got the free dialects. Have a look. It's too expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive. You've got the free dialects. Fusha, Shami, Misri. Do you know what it is? If and, you haven't studied Arabic, yeah. alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay, don't take okay, my wait, advice. No, 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 no. Let me tell, let me tell you why I like it first. Let me tell you why I like it. Why I like it is because it gives me a chance to go through a syllabus that I haven't gone through before. Yeah, fair enough. And then that's I'm interesting. A, that's interesting. For a and teacher, that's interesting. For a teacher. Yeah. And it allows me to improve on vocab that you don't know. I don't know. And dialects. Yeah. And the good thing about the good thing I like about it is it's got resources. So all the audio. So the students, for example, I use it for conversation Arabic. So I can say to the students, go and do that listening exercise. Yeah. And it's already online. And there's all the dictation exercises. So yeah, for a teacher, good. it's like a it's package. It's good for Westerners. For Westerners. Benedict Dick has it. For Westerners. Benedict Dick has, has it. But to be honest, even me, I've got my own criticism of Benedict Dick yeah. as well. Benny Dick has it. The but it's not as good structured for Westerners as, as this. this. This is better for Westerners than Benny Dick, in my opinion. Because it's got English in it and they can, self, they can go and do some study and it's not... Too much. This, well, 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 what but combined, I would we have to com- combine. We have to combine between, between Benedict and this. Yeah. Because this has grammar. Yeah. Benedict, um, their objective was to teach you like a child. Yeah. The author mentions that you need, you need, you need to, has- to get the mother tongue of Arabic. Of the Arabic. Arabic. So it's more so just listen, imitate. Yeah. Read, imitate. Yeah. So it's got this Benedict. So if we're going to just do a quick comparison between these two books yeah. for the audience. Okay, you've got... This is the one that they'd teach in, say, universities in yeah. the UK. And there's Baini Adek, which we use a lot, for example, in the Masajid, but they're used yeah. in Muslim Egypt, countries, mainly. in Egypt mainly. Yeah. And it's got it's only Arabic, not English. Yeah. The grammar doesn't have Qawaid and grammar in the book. It has it, but very slow. Okay, yeah. Like medieval series. Very slow. 
slower, uh, slower as or different? Medina book, what I like about Medina is structured in terms of, you know, book one is Ism, book two is Fair, yeah, yeah, you know what it is. Book three as a teacher, combined you know what it is. Yeah, yeah, as a teacher. As a teacher. So, I mean, so, to be okay, honest with you, I'm going to say yeah? this out there. The Medina book syllabus is the best it's syllabus. The best, I agree. It's the best. Let's shake on that. Okay, good. Jazakallah. For those of you that say otherwise, it's because you don't know the Medina book syllabus. I wrote a blog post on that. Okay, alhamdulillah, good. About people studying in the West, studying Arabic in the West. Yeah. You have to understand, people, I, I, I'll tell you straight. Okay. People get advice from people who don't teach Arabic. That's yeah. the biggest mistake. That's true. Because he's going to be mutaassib. Yeah, to what he studied. What he studied, exactly. And sometimes they don't really have much yeah. to show for what they studied. Sometimes. And perhaps mine is a bias as well, but I think that... But um, based on experience, experience in terms yeah. of, okay, I've for taught the this West, book. for yeah. the West. I've taught I all three books. I've taught Bainia Dake, I've taught this and I've taught... The, obviously, the Medina books are the best, yeah. yeah. But for the, the same, West. I, the reason why I didn't like this year yeah. is because... As a practicing Muslim, there's not enough Islamic context stuff. Yeah, and there's Islamic <laughs> stuff in there as well. Yeah, but a yeah. lot of it, majority. Yeah. But with Ben Yadik, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's mashallah, the, the text, the reading text it's, in book three and four it's adab. is it's a lot of adab yeah. in Talbiya. Stuff that's like, it makes you study things indirectly. Yeah. Like al alaqa bin al abu al abna, yeah, yeah, all those kind of things. It's, it's very yeah. nice. You see. But here it's going to be more like it's media. Dis- it's media. It's media based. Or it's like what in the discourse. All modern standard Arabic is media, media based. based. Yeah. And political and geographical yeah. and stuff like that. So it's beneficial. It's beneficial. No doubt. Okay. But we have what you have, you have the al al af- the, the, the best one. <laughs> okay. So going back to so this is soas. Now one year you do Arabic yeah. grammar. Yes, Second year. year was my favorite year. Go on. Because you had a different teacher, Sheikh Ahmed Masha. He's he is like one of my most favorite teachers I've experienced. Alhamdulillah. Because in Soas. In, uh, in Soas. Yeah. Because um, we don't want to sound harsh, yeah. but he's the only one I saw in the prayer room. Okay. And he was mut- and he, he was humble. Yeah, yeah. Despite his qualifications, like he was a doctor in English linguistics, let alone Arabic. Yeah. And he still preserved traditional ideology with Arabic Mashallah, whereas other teachers didn't Excellent. have that so yeah. I'm going to his class I was going to his class when I was in year one yeah. just extra just lessons benefit, yeah. yeah and he was bringing out jam and durus al Arabiya yeah. he's mentioning Quran I'm yeah. like this is my guy like <laughs> I need to benefit There's from him I can't ways, wait yeah. for year two yeah. literally and his structure of teaching was like because I wasn't only going there to learn Arabic yeah. because I I wouldn't say I knew Arabic because I don't know Arabic now I'm yeah. still a student still as students. much as I teach yeah, yeah we're still students Lisan al-Arab come yeah. on it's nine yeah. volumes in the new print, funny <laughs> in the old, like. So, I was learning from his teaching style as well. Yeah. He was the most beneficial teacher in SOAS, in my opinion. Yeah. And he wrote, he re- like, Ismail studied before me in year yeah. two, but yeah. by that, by the time I got to year two, they changed the book. Yeah. So, he rewrote the whole course book for year two. Excellent, yeah. And combined between media Arabic, as well as Traditional grammar, Arabic. but it was more of literature. Yeah. So he'll come with... Have different... you got the book? Have I've you still got, got the book at home, yeah, yeah, we need to get a copy. Let's get yeah. a photo copy so we Shut can benefit up. from it. It's very good. So his subject, what was his subject? Arabic 2. So Arabic 2, Arabic yeah. Two. So you do Arabic 1, then you do Arabic 2. <coughs> Arabic 2. And there's some side subjects as well that you would do. So the in time. the second year, I did Islamic studies. Yeah. Or Islamic text. Islamic text. Yeah, okay. I don't want to speak too much about okay, that. Okay, then we go to year yeah. 3. Let's jump to year 3. I did, I did um, Arab, um, Arab literature in year 2 as well. Lovely. That was very good. Yeah. And my teacher was Chinese. Chinese. She was the top... Arabist. In Western world for Arab literature. Amazing. And she's... she's an amazing teacher. She's yeah. an amazing teacher. And obviously, year two was hard for me. And this is what people have to understand. Sometimes you go through difficulties. That's yeah. when I got sick that time. Yeah. I was in and out of hospital. So it was a struggle. But there's support. Yeah. I benefited a lot from understanding this literary text. Yeah. And you didn't give up? No, I didn't give up. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You completed the degree? I completed even the through degree, the difficulties. Even through difficulties. Yeah. By last permission. Allah. Then we go to year three, the best year. Go on. Morocco. Al Maghrib. So now this is your second trip outside. I'm in Kunta for Maghrib for Let As they say, if you're in Morocco, don't be amazed. <laughs> don't, don't, this, everything that's going to happen, you're going to see Ajaib. Yeah. You're going to see Ajaib in Morocco. You Morocco, know, Morocco has got a, a, a strong heritage. Yeah. Islamic heritage, knowledge as well. Ajromiya. Ajromiya. Was written in, by, in yeah. Fes, where I was. Yeah. The Sheikh Ibn Ajrum is from Fez. And they say the oldest university is in? Um, in Fez as well, well yeah, Fez. Yeah. is there. And then we have, obviously, all those great scholars. Masjid Bu'anani yeah. was in front of my house. Yeah. Like, literally, where Bricks and Tribes is to Medina College, that was how close I was to the masjid. Mashallah. That is like, that masjid is 900 years old. SubhanAllah. Sheikh Ma'koudi, of the ulama of Nahu, he has an explanation of Al-Fi Abdul Malik and Ajrumiya, used to teach in that masjid. Yeah, so... So you learn those things... 
Yeah. Now you start to feel, what is, you start to feel, I'm walking where these ulama walked. Yeah. Like this is a land where, that's for example, a, that's, people that's speak like Morocco, you know, yeah. they have their dialect. Yeah. It's hard to understand. Yeah. But when you meet a Moroccan that knows Arabic, it's like the best you're hearing. Yeah. They really know it. A quick question. Just a one quick question. Is Moroccan dialect Arabic or is it not Arabic? For In me, I'm a Arabic. Don't okay. be mad at me. <laughs> but it's more a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, mixed. it's so mixed. It's mixed. It's like, yeah. I wanted to learn it okay. because I was there. But then when you realise, like, nah, yeah. I can't do this. Okay. It's so hard. It's difficult to understand. It's the one dialect that every Arab would tell you I don't understand. Yeah. And every other Arab, every other Arab understands each other. Yeah. But, but not Americans. One. Okay. Okay, fair it's, enough. It's because of the mixture of French. Yeah. It's so yeah. hard. Yeah. Okay. So hard. Come it's back. almost like another language. And why I say that as well, there was people who spoke their dialect didn't understand me if I spoke Arabic. Yeah, people have to translate to them. Yeah, so it is it's it's, own, it is an, its own language. Can it be compared to English and, and patois, basically? No way, patois. You, you can, can understand. understand it if you well, put not it everyone, into it. Not everyone. It's, it's jahan. No, they don't no, want no. to understand not it. Not everyone. Look, it's, that's why when it comes up. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> slow it down, isn't it? That's it. That's it. Slow it down. You understand? Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you got BBC TV, they always put subtitles on. <laughs> They're taking <laughs> liberties. That's, that's, that's racism. <laughs> that is racist. They're taking liberties. They slow down. Hours. But even if you go on TV, slow down. You know, okay. sometimes a, a, a habit, but you know, you start driving in the yeah. UK. As a Muslim, the only thing you can listen to other than your own audio is LBC. Yeah, then. or Clubhouse now. So you yeah. see when someone calls in and they've uh, got packed to accent, yeah. it's like, bro, do us some justice, isn't it? Like, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> know your audience, isn't it? <laughs> And they put in Hal and Mado, yeah. <laughs> Where's it gone in it, like? What's that really know to oh, speak it so no. fast and like, oh, Allah, oh, Mustafa. No, and yeah. you hear you hear the broadcast, the host is like, you know, they're, they're just trying to be polite. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> but All right, come Morocco, on, man. studying in Morocco, one year. And this is a, this is another really important part of the program at yeah. the university that it's year a four-year abroad. program and you you have to do year abroad. Yeah. Without that year abroad, this is a question I've got for you. Do you think you would it the the degree program would be as good if they didn't have a year abroad. No. Meaning, would it be consolidated? No, it's it's simple. It's that's essential, isn't it? It's that essential because the level that you're expected to reach. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie. For me, I have I benefited from my year abroad. Yeah. I wouldn't say that for every student though. Yeah, and and because of my choice of where I went to. Yeah, what, um, what other choices were there? There was Morocco, or... Alexandria. Yeah, there was um, Palestine, yeah. Palestine. And there was Jordan. Jordan. Jordan, yeah. Now, why did I choose Morocco? I'd been Morocco before just for holiday. I really liked Morocco. Yeah. I wanted to go to Egypt, but then the feedback of the institute in Egypt was very bad. Yeah. There was a lot of issues there, so I wasn't. I didn't want to have to do with that. Jordan is expensive. I've and I'd been Jordan before. I'm not like it can be quite a boring place. Yeah. If you're there long term. Yeah. Uh, so I was like, I ruled it out. Morocco, I was like, okay, cool. I can find a flight for fourteen ninety nine for one. So there's yeah. no excuse of you can't afford to go there. Yeah. I paid fifteen pounds for a flight once, oh, so sure. I knew yeah. I can go there easy. Go. If I went, if I had to come back for emergency, I can come, come back. back. Yeah. So I chose Morocco, and um, so that yeah, was the best yeah, choice. That's the best choice, and especially it, for the situation that I ended up in. Yeah. It was the best choice I made. Yeah. Okay, so. You're in Morocco. Tell me your the day in Morocco. You're studying at a university and an institute. I say institute. Daytime. Well. What are you studying? What um, books? So alhamdulillah. And for living me, the life again. Got, looking at compared to Kuwait as well. So those two things. What are you studying? Kuwait is my favorite place, though. Just to put okay. out there. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> go on, then, go on. You've been Kuwait. Yeah, yeah, nice. Kuwait nice. is nice. Yeah. Um, and it's not. It's it's balanced. It's a balanced place. Yeah. So. With Morocco now, well, Morocco is very nice. So it's hard to say, but Morocco is very nice. Yeah. Now, when I went there, what I liked about Morocco, I lived in the old... You, you have two types of cities in Morocco. You have Medina Jadid or Medina Qadima. Yeah. The old city, the new city. I lived in the old city. That's tra quite traditional. It's a big souk. It's yeah. a huge market. To the point, the last six months, I didn't need a fridge. I didn't have a fridge. Yeah. In, I moved house. Yeah. I did not have a fridge. And... Because I can walk out my door and buy food to cook now. What you, yeah, yeah, which is fresh as well, fresh. which is nice. Or yeah. I can go to the butcher. Yeah. 
get meat, yeah. go to the man who sells olives, he'll yeah. clean it for me with lemon juice, yeah. and I can take it to the, the restaurant that grills stuff and ask them to grill my meat. You're making they, me hungry, man. They do stuff like this. That sounds so it's, nice, man. Spine, it, it was amazing. And, and we, we go into the supermarket and pick up it in the fridge that's been... It's going off. Even <laughs> but anyway. It's, yeah. It's yeah, so that's nice. Man. You that's get nice. fresh food. You get fresh food. Good for the brain. Good for the brain. Good yeah. For the, yeah. You, you live life, innit? Yeah. So... Okay. The people, why Morocco, Morocco was personal to me because I had a, a butcher, Jazzar, called Tawfiq. Yeah. He goes, Wallahi, Ibrahim, ma takallamna al-fusha hatta atayt. We didn't speak correct Arabic until you came. <laughs> I made like, everyone speak Arabic. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't talk to me in Darija. I don't yeah. understand this. So they have to speak yeah. Fusha. It forces. And a thing that students suffer when they learn Arabic is being belittled in your student. I, I went joining with my brother and they were like, ah, you need them in Dili. He said, making a song out of it. He wants a tissue. You need them in Dili. That's what they were doing. Mocking That's bad. it. Yeah. But if you're not strong in your own character, yeah. that will put you off. Yeah, yeah. You won't want to speak. You'll try everyone. to speak in English and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. They will say to me, this is Luga to... Someone said Luga to Jahiliya. Actually, this is how far some of them right, are Right, Jordan or... Morocco. Morocco, yeah. A little girl, six years old, said I'm speaking Turkish. <laughs> Literally. He said, this guy's speaking Turkish. Yeah. So, That's... but then I have to say, no. This is the language of the Quran. Yeah. You have to preserve it. Yeah. Then people start thinking and people talk. Yeah. But then the brothers, you, the friends that I made there, they all spoke proper Arabic. So yeah. that was me every day. Yeah. No English. I'm just speaking Arabic every, every single day. day. Yeah. And when it came to the markas now, the center that I was studying in, because of my previous studies of Arabic, they didn't expect me. Like from Soas, they don't expect me. They have levels based on hundreds. So it's like 100 to 700. Yeah. So I got to meet the administrator of um, the Marcas and the brother who finds your house. So the admin, she, the admin, she was there and the brother who finds your house. This, the day I landed for dinner. Yeah. So we're just there talking and stuff. She goes, okay, I think you need to do a placement test because usually um, when students come from SOS on level like 300. Yeah, but you're not. They made a new level for me. It was <laughs> level 700 at first. They were at first, yeah. They said, okay, there's only you and there's one other student. She's coming from somewhere. We're going to put you in the same class in level 600 doing that book, Al-Kitab. Al so you have to go off with the book, really? No, alhamdulillah. Oh. Allah saved me from this. <laughs> <laughs> because go to the class now. This, the student came an hour late. So just yeah. me and the teacher for the first hour. And so it's one-to-one one one to one. had one-to-one. So he what? tested me. Yeah. And he's like, subhanAllah, I don't think anyone else in this marakas knows what you know. And that's obviously by Allah's permission what I've studied before. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. And for me, what I, what I feel Allah gifted me with is that I love grammar of yeah. Arabic. People don't like grammar of languages, yeah. but I really like it. So I've excelled in that because not everyone likes grammar. Yeah, yeah. Majority of people say, oh, I hate, yeah, I hate yeah. grammar. Grammar's dry, they say. Yeah. It's, not, it's not like adab, it's not interesting. It's but not, you have to make it relevant. Yeah. So to the point, he tested me and the, the other girl came. She said, I haven't studied Arabic for two years. I'm like, how is she in level 600 then? Don't make sense. Yeah. So after the class, I said, Sheikh, like, please, yeah? If we have to be in the same class, let's make a deal. I'll come for five hours a week and give her a 10. I don't mind. Yeah. Because then I'll just do my thing. Yeah. And just live like I live yeah, in Morocco. Yeah, exactly. I'll only study five hours a week. It's nice. So he's like, okay, I'll speak to them because this is you know, a clear difference yeah. that you can't be in the same class. Yeah. Like, if come on, you're asking what's the difference between fa'ala and you know, yaf'ala. This, we can't be in the same yeah, class. Yeah, That's going to be a yeah, punishment. Yeah. So For her. And for me, yeah. I have to be there, like, to one year, listen to that, that's, that's, that's stress. So, I want to excel, because I'm not, I'm in Morocco, I've got a teacher who's, especially in Arabic grammar yeah, yeah. and Arabic literature, I need to maximise the benefit from him. Yeah. So that I can study what I can't study when I'm back here. Yeah, yeah which is important, that's the whole point of being there. That's why it? you travel, yeah, so you, travel. you travel, you, you go to get something you can't get. Yeah. That's what we know that Rihlat al Talab al the ulama will stay with their sheikh yeah. until they start hearing the same thing. Yeah. Now I need to move. Yeah, go somewhere. I go somewhere to find something that I can't have. Yeah. And they'll further their studies. That's why they excelled. I can't go somewhere to study something that, that I could have got done here. Yeah. Yeah. You teach it, let alone study it. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember the teacher Katie said, look, they've said that you can have your own class, seven hour, seven and a half hours. Well, at first it was twelve hours a week. I had one to one, twelve hours a week. Yeah. So the sheikh said, What do you want to do? He said, let's do the last chapter of Kitab Ta'allam, yeah. the last book, just for the exam. So yeah. I did it in like two lessons, finished yeah. it. Then I studied Tatbiq and Nahu. That's one of my other favorite Excellent. books. Excellent. It's up there. The Abdul Harwajih. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. For those book. you want to learn 
Iraq of the Quran. Mm -hmm. I studied that in two months, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, excellent. Cover to cover. Yeah. So you had what basically, you was in more of one to one, yeah. one to one teacher. So you went through how many books? Let's, let's list the books. Just well, so. I did um, the Tazbik and Nahu. And, and then I did Al Fiyah. Yeah. yeah. Which is the kind of the main the reference Nahu point. Nahu for for Nahu. Nahu. Yeah. In, in, and then he's got the Af'al, the Dhamit al Af'al in. But even the Sharh that I have, it has yani, um, Sarf that has been added. Added at the end of it. So you did Sarf as well. Yeah, I did Sarf as well. Excellent. So you finished? <laughs> finished Al Fiyah Malik. <clears throat> Excellent. And the Sharh ibn Aqil. Yeah, that's um, what they do in the Jami as well, but yeah. we do some of it, not all of it. The Muqtasar. Yeah, they've, they've cut out some chapters. Okay, so that's excellent. So you did Nahu, you did a year in Morocco. Let's move on and yeah. continue the journey. Take us through it. So, came back. Also, one. I did a little bit of um, Ilm al-Urud. I didn't get to finish it. That's something yeah. I still want to study. Because that's like... What's Ilm al-Urud? It's, like? it's the study of the Buhur al-Shi'r, I mean, the, the scales of poetry. Yeah. So that was done. That was written originally by Imam Sibway's teacher, Khalid Ibn Ahmed al-Farihidi. He's one who authored the book Mizan al dhahab He authored the book. Yeah. And basically, that consists of the sixteen scales of poetry that is considered pure Arabic poetry. So that's a reference point for that science. Yeah. That's the main. That's a reference. Point. That's a reference point for the science. Yeah. It's called Mizan al-Dhahab. Mizan al-Dhahab is the book that I was and studying. I think this was Khalid Ibn Ahmed al-Farihidi. Yeah. There's okay. another one. I have a few. There's a few, yeah. You know, in Kuwait, back in 2013 when I went to Kuwait, you know, when you see Fa'ala, Mafa'i, you just think it's Sarf. Yeah. So I saw a book and I said, oh, let me get that book. Yeah. I thought it was Sarf. <laughs> it's <laughs> Is it poetry? It's it poetry, yeah. So it's when not... I got it back to I'm like, what's this? Like, I don't understand that science. But yet. now you know yeah, it. Yeah, now I know it. Yeah. And I have it still. So I can refer back to yeah. it. Because my teacher said, what I liked about when I studied in Morocco, the, my teacher knew my ambition was to teach Arabic. So he didn't allow me to study it as if I wasn't trying to be a teacher. So I might get a question right, but he said, that's still not good enough for you who wants to be a teacher. Yeah, good. So I had, I had a test every every month I had a test. Yeah. So it became normal. You don't think about a test. Yeah. It's just, I have to do it. Which is another good part of studying or learning. Yeah. A good, another good technique for learning is to have regular, regular exams. Regular tests. People are scared of yourself. exams. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. I'm not scared. I don't even revise. Yeah. Because you're supposed That's to revise all the time. Revise. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you're right. If you're revising mm. all the time, then it's all right. But <laughs> you, you have to revise. Your A level exams but you don't year, wait to revise. Yeah, That's what basically. I mean. What it means is that if you're sitting at A level exams, you should be constantly revising as you go along. Yeah, don't, not that you don't, don't pile revise. it up. Don't pile it up. That's the advice. So I don't revise for exams. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, it means you're, you, I, you study for the knowledge. I study for the knowledge. So, so you're the exam meant to comes at any always. time. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So I don't revise for exams. Yeah. That, yani, <laughs> no <wadda> hal kalam. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but then after I finished, so he wanted to give me... Every, so the reason I did poetry because he said, I want you to have... Um, to take something from all aspects of the language, yeah. at least. I did something of Balaga to the at one time as well. Yeah. For a couple of weeks, we were doing some things of Balaga. But I said, let me just do Al-Fir, man, because I'm not, I'm not going to get that anywhere else. Yeah, yeah of course. So then after this now, I come back um, and I There's started translating year. for uh, last year of Last year of SOAS. Last year of SOAS. Well. And you finished that and you've completed your degree. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, wafaqaqallah. Um, Allah gave you tawfiq to finish that. Because it's not easy. No, it's not easy. You know, it's, it's many people start something and they don't finish. And it's yeah. important to acknowledge that. And I'm that. not going to lie, for me, the fourth year was the worst year. Yeah. Especially with my experience of the third year, it's like, I don't even have a book. Yeah. In the fourth year, if year two I had a book that we said from. Year two had a book that we studied from. Year one, year two had a book. Year three, I studied books. Now year four, I'm giving handouts, like paper. I'm just like... Yeah, you're not motivated. There's yeah. no motivation to do anything. Difficult, so it's, yeah. it makes it harder. I'm but in I'm one class and like the students, there was only three students in the class. Yeah. And it's Quranic texts. Yeah. I know if you don't have Islamic studies background, you're not going to understand. We're talking about Nasir al Mansur. Yeah. yeah. al Bada. Yeah. And these things, these terminologies, I'm like, you expect them to They're know that. They're not going to know it, yeah. So I'm in the class, Charles, I'm translating for them. You're teaching so then them, I'm basically. losing motivation. Yeah. I'm like, I come to learn, not to teach. Yeah. Or yeah. even be a teaching assistant. Yeah. So it was difficult. But yeah. you have to keep going. Yeah. You have to push yourself. You have to push yourself. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah, finished. So it's done. Then um, I started more actively translating when my sheikh came over. Yeah. That was like a big... Stepping stone, because like now you're seeing the fruits of the language. Yeah. And as a shaykh, you not you love being around the scholars. Yeah. 
Now, you can't get closer to the scholar than the translator. Yeah, you sit right there. Yeah. yeah, you build an intermediate relationship. Yeah. So I can ask questions that maybe no one else will get a chance to answer yeah. because of time and stuff. I'm there. I can say, Sheikh, I need to talk to you for half an hour before we actually yeah. go up there. And, got so, and I've got him. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So I've had like yeah. good experiences because of that. Like Sheikh Hamla um, Latik when he came out. So that was nice. He was one of my favorite experiences. And. So then you from, translated for, I translated for, for what, what did you translate? What was the book? Fadl Islam. He done the yeah. Fadl Islam. Because that's the other thing when you translate, and you also get to go through the books. You're yeah. there, you can get to ask questions, and like I said, you get to apply what you know. Exactly. You can see the fruits of the. A hundred percent, and <laughs> you get to do khayr. You get to be involved in the goodness. Yeah. Good. That, the main goal is al, al ajr. You don't yeah. want anything else. Yeah. I don't want to be known as the next Sibway of the West and these yeah. things. These are things you just Inshallah, tell you yourself. You, yeah, you can. You should, yeah, you can aspire you can. to be. I've got it, his book. I'm yeah. getting there. So. <laughs> there's now a the class as well. Is it? Yeah, two volumes. Really? And there's a new sharh of Al Fiyah. Inshallah, good. By Sheikh Salman Al Ayuni of the top scholars of today of In the Nahu. Loga, yeah, from okay. Jamat Al Imam. Yeah, share that with us yeah. as well, so we can it's maybe Pidya. get it for the library. Or there's one that's due to be printed. Yeah, I think he's got something on Kitab Al as well. Yeah. So anyway, so there's yeah, things... not wanting to be known for it doesn't doesn't mean you don't want to aspire to yeah, be it. Yeah, you can still aspire. Yeah. aspire to be the best you can in that field. One hundred percent. And as being known, that's between that's you and something else. That else. comes that as comes, a fadl. Comes as a fadl. From if it doesn't come, it's not so. It doesn't stop it's you. It's not so. It doesn't stop you. The main objective is the, the aspiration, the ajar. Yeah. Because for the main example, thing. Um, after translating, I got to go to Dubai. Okay, tell us about that. That's another another rehla. Another rehla. Oh, that was nice. That was intense as well. Okay. This one is like. How are we do for time? What's the? You got this, No, don't worry. I, I um delayed it. Okay. So half an hour. Alhamdulillah. Okay, good. So, with Dubai now, after I translated for Sheikh Anis and Sheikh Hamad Atik and the likes, they invited me to the Dora that they have for ten days for especially those who are du'at. Yeah. So ten days intensive. Yeah. So now it's it's a different level now. Different like before, for example, the one year of, over time. Yeah. So Three other, months. Yeah. So the other daughter you did before was as a student. Now you're yeah. going as a teacher. It's a different yeah. type of different okay. kind of study. Different type of study. Okay. Yeah. Carry on. Let's go. I said it goes back to when I said you know when you study a book. There's like five levels to study the book. Yeah. So that was nice because now I'm among the people that I wanted to be amongst, but I couldn't in terms of the graduates from the Jamia. Yeah. Even PhD. Masters, yeah. they're all there. Yeah. I'm mean, studying in Manhaj al Salikin. That's in fiqh. Yeah, yeah. And Sheikh Anis has got a book, um, Arba'in fi Hukuk al Rabbil Alameen, 40 hadith on basically, it's basically Kitab al Tawheed, but in the book of hadith. Yeah. And Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Reyes studied with him, um, Sifat al Sur, yani, book in the Sul of Fiqh. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh Sa'adi's book. Yeah, Sheikh Sa'adi's book. Yeah. Nukhbat al Fiqh, we did that. And yeah, do it in. Yeah, so in these text. are like mutun ilmiya. Yeah. These are the classical texts that you study to be a student of knowledge, teacher, da'ya. No. So that experience. And that was like, for example, you wake up, Fajr's 5.30. Yeah. You come back. You can't go back to sleep because class starts at 8. Yeah. So you go and get breakfast quickly, yeah. straight to the masjid. Yeah. From 8 until 12, Manhaj al You go back, you have a break to after Asr. Then after Asr, you have... Asr to Maghrib, the, 40, the book of Hadith with Sheikh Anis. After Maghrib, you have Sheikh Abdulaziz Sadiq. Intensive. Yeah. After Aisha, you have Sheikh Hamal Atiq, Qawaid, Wad Dawabit, Takfir, Wad Tabdi'ah. Yeah. So it's nice. Nice, yeah, very nice. But it's intense. It's intense, very nice. But it's only the 10 days. Yeah, yeah. The time you have a break, you can't you're go out, you're sleeping. <laughs> you're <know, Hey>, like, <laughs> Between Dhuhr and Asr, you're gone. Gone. It, it, yeah. But it was nice. Ten days. Ten days. One day off for shopping and stuff like that. Friday. Friday off. Yeah, Friday off. Yom al-Jumma. Other than that, full and intense. Yeah. I went twice. So, so two different levels as well. Yeah. The same Dora. Yeah. It's like, because you do first 20 hadith yeah. of the 40, and then in the next Dora, you finish it. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it completes it. Yeah. So you finished how many books there? Five different Mutun. Yeah. In all the different sciences. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's a student of knowledge program. Yeah. Because you're studying a book in every one of the sciences. You've already got the grammar, which is needed in the yeah. Arabic. And now you're studying all the books in the different sciences. 100%. In addition to the study that you do. it's all in the Arabic language. And it's all in the Arabic language. Yeah, yeah so it's like a, it's like a, a madrasa, basically. Yeah. It's a, it, not like it is a madrasa, all intents and purposes. Madrasa ilmi, obviously. Of course. Okay, so Dubai. And after that, back to Kuwait. I went to Kuwait again twice. 
for a 10 day dole out in, with them as well. Okay, excellent. So that's something I try to keep up now. Yeah. So but obviously, because of COVID, we haven't gone. We would have gone maybe October and yeah. we did another one next month, next month coming. And that's making Maraja of the Motun. That's new different, Motun, different. Yeah, different sciences. stuff. Like with the Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, Sheikh Ali, Ali Tawajiri. Tawajiri. Yeah. He does Tafsir. Tafsir every time. And Aqidah. Yeah. yeah. So last daughter, they done a lot of the books of Imam al Saadi. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the Mawdu'a was Al Had. Yeah, and he thinks to do with atheism and the likes. Yeah. So Excellent. it's very structured. Yeah. Very structured. So it's, that's one of the things that's important to keep studying. Yeah, keep, keep learning, studying. Keep making maraja. Okay, tell me about, so you've done Dubai, Kuwait, Morocco. Morocco. Yeah. Obviously you've visited Jordan. Yeah. You've done, visited Saudi. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so in Dubai now, yeah. the benefits of translation, I bumped into Sheikh Haytham Sarhan. No. He's and from I, he's Medina. He's from Medina. Yeah. Now, one of the I always liked him because yeah. he was the first sheikh who I who after I've come back from um, Kuwait the first time I've studied all sort of Talatha, these kind of books in Arabic only. Yeah. So when he speak, I know the answers. I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to say the answer in Arabic. Well. <laughs> that was the best thing. Yeah. I remember Green the, one of the conferences and the Mashaikh they come and I've stood up and asked my question. I'm not saying it in English no more. In my question is straight in Arabic. Yeah. And that was key because I remember when we was in Sheikh Falah, Rahimullah's house, I had a question I wrote down and someone wanted to be the mas'ul of asking of... everyone's questions. He just put himself there. So I asked him, I said, La, had a laysa su'ali. This is not my question. Yeah. Imagine I don't know Arabic now. I can't tell him your answer. Your... He asked the wrong question. He's asking my question wrong. Yeah. I've written it clearly and yeah. you're saying different. Something else, yeah. If I don't know Arabic, I can't, can't make do that anything. term be. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get the wrong answer. Yeah. That you might act upon. Yeah. Yeah. So those things is like, you, Lost in translation. Yeah. You start to see the immediate Impact, connection yeah. to knowledge and the people of knowledge. Yeah. That Absolutely. you don't have if you don't have the Arabic language. Yeah. Most things that need to be learned if you want to advance. You can study on a beginner's level outside yeah. the Arabic language. But things you need to know, you have to know the Arabic language. So let's, could we say, or I guess you can say, you can't really be a student of knowledge unless you've... You have to know the Arabic yeah. language. I assume knowledge meaning a da'i, a teacher, yeah. a proper student of knowledge. Yeah. It's there's not. no way Sheikh Salih Sindhi spoke about this as well yeah. of the things that is affecting students of knowledge today is weakness, weakness of the Arabic, Arabic language, language. Yeah. because when you listen to senior scholars and the works they are referring back to if your Arabic is not strong enough you can't even read that book yeah that's right you can't, you can't go back to the you references. can't go back to it yeah. you're, you're reading, you won't even understand it yeah you see so it's important okay before we wrap up because it's been a long and beneficial and <laughs> enlightening conversation and most importantly uh, motivational and inspirational because you don't have to go to an Islamic university to attain a level of knowledge which is makes you yeah. being able to benefit from the scholars teach and know your dean practice it and you know become a da'ya because that's it, yeah, all sorry. the purposes yeah that point I was making in Dubai when I met Sheikh Haytham Salhan yeah. I got to translate just in two days in a day yeah Asura Thalatha he did it, it, it he recorded yeah, it he recorded and a you, video so it's there it's to up, benefit from on, on YouTube, his um, on YouTube his, channel yeah in the, of the English lessons so I'm I, of the a lot of the maqati the short clips of English I'm the one who alhamdulillah translated translate for the chef alhamdulillah excellent so it's good and that was you wouldn't have been able to do that if you had the, if I didn't have the Arabic have language, the Arabic language. And yeah. I, and I, the I knowledge got the Umrah guide sometimes and I got him to do the seminar of how to perform Umrah and excellent Medina. excellent and that's on YouTube as well Excellent. So that's Sheikh Haytham Sarhan. Sarhan. And yeah, the Sheikh, I remember in Medina when he, was, he teaches in Masjid Nabawi. And he had his own way of teaching, which was really beneficial yeah. to the point that he would, uh, groups of students would go and he would focus on all of the main sciences and main texts of Sheikh Uthaymin. Yeah. Or Sheikh Sa'adi, Manaj Salakin and Fiqh. Yeah. But then it was Ava Surah Al Atha, Kitab It was the Mutun. Yeah. And he'd go over them with different groups of students. Yeah. So you'd go and you'd read to him. Some from Asura Falatha, another page yeah. group. I just translated yeah. a book for him as well. Mukhtasar fi Sirat al Rasul. So 50 pages. I translated Excellent. that last Ramadan. Is it out or it's, published? It's PDF. The... It should be getting published at some point. So they've just been doing final murajat. Excellent. Okay, good. Shall so there's a lot of benefit. Yeah. A lot of benefit out there. So not just translating for the Mashaykh, also translating their books. Yeah. And teaching. That was the first book I translated, alhamdulillah. Yang. All yeah. of it from beginning to end. From beginning to end. Good. Okay, before we close up, there's two things. Number one, uh, books and book fairs. Yes. Uh, I know, for example, your sheikh and my sheikh, Omar Jamaiki. Yeah. He's a bookworm. I say it all the time. The consultant. Yeah, you have to yeah. go, you have to seek advice. You have to seek advice yeah. if you want to go buy books. Okay. 
You've gone on a couple of, I think you've gone to a book fair in Egypt with him or No, Jordan. I didn't get to go to Egypt. I went, I went to a book fair by myself in Morocco. In Morocco, okay. Yeah. Tell me about it. Because what's book fairs? I remember Medina, we used to love the book fairs. Every time book fair comes out, all the students are excited. Yeah, it's a dream. The book fair is like... That's something you actually hear about. If you're going to find... Other than a janazah, you're going to hear about a book a fair. A book fair. That's yeah. the main thing. Because a student, he's not a student without it. Without books. Books, basically. So, you know, this is a it's small library. Like, I keep saying it, but it is a small no, library. but it's something, to, you know. Yeah. Compared to libraries that you've seen, yeah, obviously, yeah, of the Mashiach and stuff like that. They're like... And maybe two floors. But sometimes. we start like this. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You see? I mean, it's enough. It's sufficient. Yeah. I'm not, you know. So they say if... Sheikh Abdurrahman al Saadi or Sheikh Atamin only had 200 books in their library. Sheikh Abdurrahman al Saadi. Yeah. But those books, 200, one book, is one book might be 20 volumes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Those are the things that we have yeah. to know as well. Yeah. And so, also, it was different back then. A lot of the books were written by hand. Yeah, they were manuscripts. Yeah, they were manuscripts and stuff like that. Okay, so you went to Book Fair in Morocco. Yeah, so. And for still, book fairs, the benefits of a book fair. How do you fair, buy books now then? What's your, because now, for example, we're in the UK, most books are in English. How do you get your books? Where do you get your books from? So you when I travel, yeah, alhamdulillah, for the last couple of years, I've been going to Umrah every February time. So I would definitely go and buy books then. Yeah. Kind of thing. And I, I don't just buy books now for the sake of it. I buy books in the Hajj, like if I need it. Otherwise, I'll get it a PDF until right. I can go and buy it. Because it's knowing the difference between the price of a book here and the price of the book there is sometimes a lot. Yeah. It can be a very expensive thing. So, yeah. like for example, when I went to Morocco, the book fair there, I was happy that I was buying volumes for an affordable price. Yeah. That day was a mad day because I went to Dar Baydar, Casablanca. I yeah. don't really like Casablanca. It's like the New York of Morocco. It's rough. Yeah. yeah. Nightlife is forget it, stay in your hotel. It's not yeah. too safe. So I was like, I'm not even going back to this place. I went once while I was in Morocco for the year for a couple of years. I don't like this part. I'm not going there yeah. again. Then I had the book fairs there. So I'm like, I have to go. <laughs> it's five hours on the train. I said, you know what? Five I don't hours. even care. I'm going there. I'm back the same day. I'm not staying there. <laughs> <laughs> Allah, I'm not staying That's there. That's how they gone. I got I'm sick. Asked. I did it. I got sick. Oh, my days. But I did it. I did it. I was like, there's no way I'm staying here. And I was like a madman. I got these big bad <laughs> suffering. No, you take off your phone. You got bare red marks. And you're like, oh, what did I do to myself? My books are, he books are heavy. 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 I That's took a... sport bag. That's how I knew I was going to be in trouble anyway. But I still did it that. Like. And I was like, oh my days, there's no way I'm staying in this place, yeah? So I went early. I got there about Doha time. Yeah. I prayed. I went to the book fair right by the big masjid, Hassan Thani. And I went straight. I, okay, I know what I want. That's when I bought Lisan al Arab, yeah. Fatah al Bari. Lisan al Arab. All the volumes. Those are volumes. All, all, volume. all, everything's volumes. Like Nothing kind of, was not volumes. I got, carried them. <laughs> I carried it on my shoulders. I, I, I'm pitying you right now. I'm thinking, I, I can imagine I can, the pictures in my head. How are you managing it? You could have been carrying it on your back. It would I be too heavy. I was carrying it <laughs> on my back. You're talking about and volumes. And in my arms, volumes. yeah. Allah must have done that. It was volumes. But alhamdulillah, it's okay. a memory. What's the fight? The fight is a memory. The fight is a tab for yeah. knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge is not, doesn't, come not, doesn't come easy. doesn't come easy. You have to be willing to sacrifice. Exactly. So. Alhamdulillah. Good. I went there. Five hours there, and I went straight back on the train back home. After the book fair. After Not the book stop fair, it, I didn't no. stop. Yeah. And I was just like, Allah must have. I got, I got, ended up with like a cold, I was sick for a couple <laughs> of days. But I was like, boy, I, I don't mind. I'm the Again, determination. Yeah. You know, you have an intention set out. Shall I do it? You got what you want. You, yeah, 100%. The, the outcome, the, the thing is, I think in this case, what's really important is just to know that there's an outcome. Yeah. You got the books, you did your thing. Got the book. That's it. And it's like, you actually, you, you start to appreciate that you got the book. Yeah. That's right. And how you got the book. Yeah. Because it's like... And if the it's memory. Just, like, when I've travelled to Kuwait for the Dorat, you get books given to you. Yeah. That's the reality. Like, they gift it out. Like, they really look after students of knowledge. And that's where you start to really love being someone who's aspiring to be a student of knowledge. Yeah. The way everyone shares that journey, there's muhabba there. There's, like, ihda. And, you know, to give someone... To, to show love or to gain love is by giving gifts. Gifts, yeah. So, it's like, it happens. Yeah. And you see it. So I've come back with a lot of books. Yeah. I've got you go through this things of customs. You're like one time, yeah. Okay, me and Sheikh Homi went to Kuwait and Ayub and Allah Musta and we had bare books. Bare books. We had so much books, some had to get shipped over. But we tried, you know when you style it, boom, hand luggage is packed with books, <laughs> nothing else. You just roll that on your, your shoulders, hoping please don't weigh this year. Cause that weighs more than your luggage, like <laughs> that hand luggage. Oh my. Imagine. They don't ever weigh. We like, alhamdulillah, we put the bag through, we're going through. Man points to a scale. Oh, no. We've gone through, this is where you put your passport. Man said, yeah, the scale. 
for the hand luggage, <laughs> I you'll be just bought a bag for fifty uh, dinar, and that's definitely that's... way overweight. Let alone my rucksack as well, almost bag. I said, look, I said please, we're students of knowledge. Wallahi, there's nothing in these bags but books. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't having, a, and you know, like he's like, now go back. He's like, there's no way we can go back because yeah. we're gonna have to pay. And it's not, no, you know, you know, yeah, at yeah, the airport, airport you're it's paying ten times loads. more. You're like, paying loads of money. That's more than the flight yeah, itself. Yeah. You're paying loads. I was like, please, like, what do you expect us to do? I was proper begging this guy. Yeah. Then he made a phone call. And he just, and he was speaking his own language. I said, say, Talib. I was like, okay, maybe he's trying to put in a word. He said, books. I said, no, nah, I opened it. And you just see books, he's like, go. I was like, I have the love. Saved you some thousands. Like, I throw away clothes in the bin yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I've been places, some guy's stingy. One kid, he's like, no, I go take the clothes out, that's in the yeah, bin. Yeah, I need the behind. books more yeah, than the clothes. Yeah, yeah. Again, so, the value of the books, isn't yeah. it? The value of the books, what it contains. Because some things you're not going to get yeah. here, that's the reality. There's an amazing poem, actually. I was going through a book with one brother on Adab that they study in Jamatul Imam. And it's by, um, I forgot the name of the, the scholar. But he's speaking about Al-Kitab and he makes a sifa of the book. He describes the book. Oh. And it is so beautiful. Matt, we're going to, inshallah, maybe we'll read it afterwards. No, inshallah. It's really nice. But anyway, going back to, so just closing now. What are you doing now? You're, you've got your, your... So now I do my, um, I have an online Arabic institute. Yeah. Called? Um, the Arabic School. Yeah. That was in, That's a nice in, name. In, yeah, because I like the word of the Arabist. Yeah. That's something I picked up while I was in university. Yeah. In Arabic, al mustarib So it's someone who's, yani, has a love for Arabic culture or the language. Yeah. That's the general meaning of al al mustarib the yeah. Arabist. So it's something that always stuck with me. Yeah. So I named my school after that. Alhamdulillah. So I have students from different parts of the world. Yeah, and it's Teaching online. Them Arabic. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Excellent. And other stuff, obviously. Your your uh, imam. On Wednesdays, I have um, you... Islamic studies that I do as well. Yeah. Just general. Islamic you, do, you do khutb in the local area. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And you, alhamdulillah. Just benefit people with Quran, Arabic. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Literally, yeah. Just due to finish Quran with Sheikh Sharif soon, inshallah. But it's this, the beginning, it's the end of the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say the end of the beginning. You know, you're just people, Yeah. When you finish Quran, it's, you don't, you're not half it yet. Yeah, yeah. You finished. It's, you know you can now. Now you, you, you've been corrected. You know you've, now you can you've memorized. Been made to forget by shaitan, recited, and, and now you have to review for the rest yeah. of your life. So, you that's why these things seek knowledge. Kama qala Imam Ahmed min al min al-Mahdi al It's yeah. from the cradle to the grave. Yeah. It's not temporary. Yeah, that's right. So even I didn't get to go to Islamic University. I've been studying. I continue to study. It doesn't ever yeah. stop. Yeah. As you know, as a graduate, you didn't stop when you graduated. You increased. You yeah. did more. Yeah. It's like it opened the door for you. Yeah. You took what you need to function to continue until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a never ending journey yeah. that people have to remember. It's not part time. Yeah. Because your knowledge, as Imam Ahmed said as well, you need food and drink sometimes. Yeah. But knowledge you need it for every second and every breath. You yeah. need knowledge. It's the most enjoyable thing that you can do. Yeah. I think when we had Yasin on here, he was he was talking about how enjoyable knowledge is. Let me get that let me get that quote up anyway. Let me try to find it quickly. But I think it's really speaking about books, we've been speaking about books and stuff like that. Let me get it up. Hold on. Adab is really, really, really important to understand the Adab or to read Adab because it gives you history of, you know, yeah, definitely, you know, poetry and nothing and stuff like that. So listen, to, watch this. Oh, here it is. It was Wasful Kitabi li Abi Uthman al Jahid. He's known for Arabic literature. He's known as well. for literature. Yeah. So this is he's describing the book, a book, right? Books. This is, this is in Kitab al-Hayawan, uh, one of the famous books of, of Adab. He goes, Al-Kitabu huwa al-jalisu ladhi la yutriq, wa sadiqu ladhi la yughriq, wa rafiqu ladhi la yamalluk, wa al-jaru ladhi la yastabti'uk, wa sahibu ladhi la yu'amiluk bil-makr, wa la yakhda'uka bil-nifaq, wa la yahtalu laka bil-kathib. الكتاب ونعم الأنيس لساعة الوحدة ونعم المعرفة ونعم المعرفة ببلاد الغربة ونعم الوزير والتن... والنزيل نزيل بين قاستو no. 
الكتاب وعاء ملئ الماء وظرف حشي ظرفا وإناء شحن مزاحا وجدا We're speaking about what it contains. It's a container which is full of knowledge and a container which holds laughter and seriousness. فمتى رأيت بستانا يحمل في رد في ردني وروضة تقل في حجري وناطقا ينطق عن الموتى ويترجم عن الأحياء. When the book, when you see a book which is like a garden of and stuff like that, then he goes, ومن لك بمؤنس لا ينام إلا بنومك ولا ينطق إلا بما تهوى آمن من في الأرض وأكتم للسر من من صاحب السر. So he's speaking about a book. Look how many. Look how he describes the book. Obviously, so a lot of it needs explaining. A lot of it needs kind of like the kalimat. But, anyways, when, but that's again part of the process. Yeah. When you look at these adab, the objective is to make your language. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of synonyms. Yeah, there's, there's words that are not common. There's, there's, there's words which are gharib and stuff like that. So then now but, you learn what they are. Exactly. So look at this. Well, let's just take one word. This word, rudna. Arudnu. Kummu thawbi wa nahwihi. Yuqalu thawbun wasi'u rudni. So when we go back here now, look at look at what he says when he says this word, rudna. He says, فَمَتَ رَأَيْتَ بُسْتَانًا يُحْمَلُ فِي رُدْنِي When do you see? Look, you hold the book, subhanAllah, it's Jameel. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, look, he's holding the book, he goes, when do you see a garden <laughs> yeah, that you're carrying in your, in your, in your thobe? thobe. It's a book, it's, it's a book that's in the sleeve of your thobe, it's a garden, it's full of Allah. fruits and benefits. But that right? goes to show as well, full of fruits. And how they used to think. Yeah, it's next level. But it goes, ihtiman bil ilm, subhanAllah. The, the imagery and the, but anyway, the, inshallah, that's, that's what we need to be teaching and benefiting and no, reading and the, the, the books and the knowledge, inshallah, of adab and other than that, inshallah. Because uh, adab, you know, Arabic literature, the main things that they taught was adab, was suluk. Yeah, exactly. How to your character. Exactly. They warned against evil characters by always having a bad ending. They yeah. have It has a nice story and it always goes wrong. <laughs> always, yeah. you know. And it's always about Layla. That, yeah, that it goes yeah, wrong with Layla. <laughs> <laughs> no, Anything else? No, advice is... to students that, for example, you know, they've applied, they didn't get accepted. They might be demotivated, thinking they can't. I mean, what, what, how would you give them advice to the, so what to do, what to study? The asal is not the jamia, as we know. Yeah. Jamia is of last 50 plus years, but, but knowledge has always been sought before then. So we can't forget that. And knowledge is sought by a beam of the people of the knowledge. of knowledge. And if you can't be with them on a, on a, in a university level, then be around the ones who have been there, that you can benefit from what they've benefited from. And the reality is there's, in the West, we have people that have benefited and they come back to benefit the people. So you have to benefit from them until you're able to move on. Yeah. So, and as even um, Ustad Khalid has mentioned as well, you know, the, the problem of people not studying before they go, thinking that you're going to go smell the air and it just makes you a student of knowledge. It doesn't work like that, you know. You have to be doing it from here first. Yeah. Then you're gonna, only going to excel there. It helps you if you apply to have background of doing it already. So yeah. you're gonna ask someone for a reference. They're not gonna say, I know you to be hard working. It's gonna, okay, I know you has good manners, but yeah. I haven't seen you in circles of knowledge to even put a good recommendation that makes people say, you're a worthy student of knowledge. Because the reality of you going to a, student, a university is what? To go and learn to teach people, mm. not just to remove knowledge from yourself. That's the main goal. Yeah. But it's then to call other people to that knowledge. So you have to build that mentality before you go as well. Yeah. So, so but just don't studied. make that the be the, the end goal. If you don't get into university, that's a means of knowledge. Yeah. There's many means. There's other ways that you yeah. do it, like like university here, traveling for three months, learning studying the language, programs, learning the language, then listening to lectures, translating from a sheikh. Yeah. You know, just immersing yourself where you can, making yourself. Like, alhamdulillah, if I need to ask a sheikh a question, I don't have to go to someone. Yeah. I call the sheikh. I message the sheikh. I yeah. wait for the response. Yeah. I have that. <clears throat> yeah. facilitated for me now yeah and it's possible <clears throat> that's the point yeah the point 100%. Is, 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 it's possible there's nothing no i think the i think the thing that stops most people is themselves knowledge is not meant to be difficult yeah you go through taib yeah. and seeking it but it's but enjoyable allah is made accessible because yeah. allah doesn't want you to be jahil yeah allah wants you to understand the religion but you have to want to understand the religion as well so no. it is yourself it's just yeah jazakallah and inshallah we're gonna it's been a lengthy beneficial 
discussion inshallah full of fawaid and the benefit no, barakah bikum 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 barakah b